So hi, my name is Olav. I work as a postdoc at Aarhus University, which is the second largest university in Denmark. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the differences between the PhD salary in the US and Denmark. Uh, so I did my PhD in the US at the University of Vermont, and then I moved to Purdue later on. And uh, here I'm going to go through my contracts from uh, UVM and Purdue from the years 2019 to 2023. Uh, I'll then go through the uh, a uh, PhD contract from uh, from Denmark, from Aarhus University. Um, and then finally, to make a better comparison between the two countries and how much you actually get paid in the two countries, I'm going to include one of the highest paying uh, universities for PhD stipends. Um, in the US, which is, I've, I've chosen Stanford, as from what I hear, that is one of the highest paying, if not the highest paying university in terms of the stipend. I'll then compare this to the cost of living and uh, how much spending power, power you have, basically. Okay, so let's just have a look at my first contract from the University of Vermont. So this contract was for the academic year 2019 to 2020. And uh, as you can see, my uh, stipend, my gross stipend was $25,750, but I had to pay $1,024 per semester uh, fee. In addition, you have to pay something over the summer, but I can't remember exactly how much. So I'm just going to uh, double this and uh, call that the fee that you actually pay. In addition, you get Health insurance. Health insurance is included in the contract. So you'll see that my gross salary, like I said, was $25,750. Fees, $2,048. And then tax was approximately $3,400. Which gives me a net salary of uh, approximately $20,300 or $147,000 Danish kroner. So for my uh, my second year, here you can see uh, the academic year 2020 to 21, where the salary increased to uh, $27,377, but the comprehensive fee also increased to uh, $1,300. When you add this up, you get a net salary of approximately $21,000 or uh, 152000 Danish kroner. And so for my third year, the academic year, 21-22, the salary only went up less than $200. The comprehensive fee did go down a little bit, so uh, my uh, gross salary was 27514 here, and uh, the comprehensive fee, $1,153. And this adds up to a, a net salary of approximately $21,400, or $155,000. Danish kroner. And so at this point, I left a UVM in uh, the summer of 22 to go to Purdue, but I still got a contract for that year. I just never signed it. And so if we look at that, the uh, salary here increased to $29,658, and uh, the comprehensive fee was uh, reduced a little more. And so here it was $1,028 per semester. And so this adds up to a net salary of uh, $23,302, or 169000 Danish kroner. Now, if you look at the salary increase for uh, the time I was at UVM and compare it to the uh, inflation, you can see here my salary increase was 5.4% uh, over the three years, whilst inflation was approximately 15.6%. And so your spending power is actually going down over the years. And I would not be surprised if this applies to most universities in the US. Now, if we're a little bit nicer to UVM, we can look at the net salary from 2019 to 2023, where the increase was 14.7%, with inflation just below 20%. This doesn't include rent increase. Uh, this is based on the consumer price index. 
and uh, rent went up quite dramatically over the years at uh, UVM, as well as you can see when we're uh, gonna go through the the cost of living. But your uh, spending power is going down. So now let's have a look at Purdue. So if we look at my uh, contract at uh, Purdue, here I got paid uh, $27,675. The comprehensive fee, or the equivalent of the comprehensive fee, was uh, the sum of all these. And then health insurance was not included. You have to pay for that yourself. Although it was subsidized. So in 22-23, uh, in I paid uh, $58 per month for health insurance which is uh, marginally less than what it is now. And uh, this amounts to approximately $700 per year. So my net salary at Purdue was approximately $21,400 or 155,000 Danish kroner. The cost of living is significantly lower in Indiana. So I definitely felt like my spending power improved as I moved to Purdue. So moving from UVM to Purdue, I definitely felt like my uh, my uh, spending power improved as the uh, cost of housing is significantly cheaper in uh, West Lafayette, Indiana compared to Burlington, Vermont. Groceries are also to some extent cheaper, so it definitely felt like I was my I had more money. Uh, and so my quality of housing improved quite dramatically moving from from Burlington to West Lafayette. It certainly improved my quality of life. But now let's have a look at Stanford and uh, Aarhus. And then we'll have a look at the uh, cost of living at uh, the different locations. At uh, Stanford, they pay their uh, first year students $52,000. And uh, if we look at the breakdown here, I don't know what the fees are. The tax I've estimated to be uh, $9,600 which leaves you a net salary of $42,000, or 308,000 Danish kroner. So, obviously, substantially more than the, um, the universities I went to. But, of course, living in San Francisco is going to be substantially more expensive than living in uh, Burlington, Vermont, or uh, West Lafayette, Indiana. So, uh, we're going to have a look at the, uh, the cost of living uh, after we've seen all the salaries. But now let's have a look at uh, Aarhus. Here you can see the uh, monthly gross salary for a PhD student who started the, uh, the PhD on December 1st, 2023. And the monthly salary excluding pension, yes, you get a pension, is 28,897 Danish kroner. And this translates to $47,698. But, of course, taxes are much higher in Denmark, so you will pay 37% tax, which is uh, $17,648. So your net salary is approximately $30,000, or 218,000 Danish kroner. In addition, you get a pension of uh, approximately $7,700. As an international, you can choose to get this paid out as salary. It will then be taxed, so I haven't actually calculated how much you would actually be getting, but I would say it's a substantial addition to your salary. You can also choose to uh, leave it and have, uh, have it collect as a pension, and this will not be taxed, at least not immediately. It'll go into a pension fund. So, of course, you also don't need to pay health insurance in Denmark. Everything is paid for by tax, and so... You don't really need to worry about medical expenses at all, because that's all covered. Okay, so now let's have a look at the expenses. So, in 2019, my monthly income was uh, $1,692, and um, my total expenses were quite high, substantially higher than my, uh, my net income. Luckily, I had some support from the Norwegian government, in addition to having some uh, savings, so... Uh, my rent was fairly high. I, uh, as I moved to Vermont, I didn't have that much time or uh, ability to uh, to search for uh, a good housing deal, and so my housing was quite expensive. I paid fifteen hundred dollars a month for a one bedroom apartment, and so my total expenses were approximately 
$2,250, or 16,358 Danish kroner. So as you can see, I uh, I went on a over four five hundred dollars a month uh, loss. Uh, rent is quite high in uh, Burlington, Vermont, and uh, so if we look at the next academic year, twenty twenty one, my uh, monthly income net income increased uh, a little bit, but I was also able to find a much more affordable housing option. I would say it was still a quite expensive for what I got compared to what I was used to. My total expenses went down significantly as I was able to find an apartment that was uh, substantially cheaper. And here I was actually uh, living on a uh, with a, a over $100 net positive per month, which was a, a substantial difference from the first year. So for my, uh, my third year, my uh, Rent went up significantly without my income going up much. And so here you can see it's $200 more a month. And so again, I am now in a deficit again. And uh, when I moved in the summer of 22, I saw the apartment where I was uh, living increase from $1,300 to $1,550. So... That was pretty substantial. And so I would be surprised if salary increase from the Department of Chemistry at the University of Vermont matched the increase in, uh, in cost of living. But as I moved to Purdue, my monthly income increased uh, a little bit. My expenses stayed approximately the same, but my apartment or my housing situation improved dramatically. Like I got a lot more for less money. So my spending power certainly increased by moving uh, from UVM to Purdue. Now let's have a look at Stanford. So here you get a monthly income. I'm, I'm guesstimating here a monthly income of uh, $3,500. But you're living in San Francisco. So it's also going to be a lot more expensive. This is just a very rough guesstimate of if you want to live the approximate same lifestyle as I did living in San Francisco, you're going to be spending $3,400 or 24,000 Danish kroner a month. And so you might have a slight surplus of money each month, but I would not bank on it, to be honest. And so finally, we're going to look at Aarhus. And so here you get paid $2,500 a month, but rent is substantially cheaper. So here I spend approximately uh, almost $1,400 a month living in a quite a nice two-bedroom apartment in a good location. But you can get a one-bedroom apartment in at least as good a location for around $1,000 a month. So I could be living a lot cheaper than I am with a much, much better location and quality of housing than I would in the U.S., and so you could easily save $1,000 every month if you wanted to as a PhD student. So looking at these numbers, it's pretty obvious that from a financial point of view, it's better to do a PhD in Denmark compared to uh, the U.S. Even if you go to one of the highest paying universities in the U.S., you are substantially uh, worse off compared to Denmark. Uh, PhD stipends in Denmark also don't vary between university and to university or between subjects. So it doesn't matter if you study chemistry or history or whatever. The stipend is always going to be the same. It's also always going to be the same even if you go to uh, a university in Copenhagen or Aarhus or wherever in Denmark. Uh, the PhD salary is going to be the same. The cost of living variations are much, much smaller compared to the U.S. It's it's only slightly more expensive to live in Copenhagen. Rent is a little bit higher compared to, for example, Aarhus. Uh, but it doesn't vary that much. In the U.S., you have vast differences between uh, cost of living between cities. And this was actually one of my biggest shocks moving from Copenhagen to Burlington, Vermont. Uh, going from living in a in a major European city, paying approximately a thousand dollars a month in rent, to living in a small U.S. city, Burlington has approximately 
a population of 40,000. And there I had to pay $1,500 a month in rent. So that was maybe the biggest shock moving from Copenhagen to Burlington. Another thing I wanted to point out is that these numbers are for me living very frugally in the U.S. without a car. Uh, and living in the U.S. without a car really limits your ability to move around. The, the public transit system in the U.S. is not very well developed, at least not outside of major cities. And so getting around without a car really limits your mobility. In Denmark, you can move around easily because public transit is much more developed. You can take the bus, train, you can walk or bike. Walking and biking is much easier in Denmark. Uh, in the US, you often don't have sidewalks. And riding a bike on American roads are often quite treacherous. And so most PhD students, most people in the US, including PhD students, have a car. And that's a pretty significant cost. Compared to Denmark, most PhD students do not have a car. They get around by... Uh, public transport or a bike or walking. And that's not because they can't afford it, it's because they don't feel like they need it. Okay, final thing I wanted to mention was vacation. So in Denmark you get five weeks of vacation a year and you are expected to take that vacation. In fact it looks bad on your advisor if their students or employees aren't actually taking vacation. Um, in the US it varies from university to university if they even state anything about vacation in the contract. So at UVM, you have two weeks of vacation, which you uh, will agree with your advisor on when you can take that vacation. Uh, and in many cases, they might frown upon you taking vacation. They might uh, not want you to do that. Uh, and Purdue, for example, there is no mention of vacation. So you're much more likely to be pressured into working overtime in the U.S. compared to Denmark. Uh, and that also affects how much you actually get paid relative to the amount of time you're spending on, uh, on your job. But that's all I have to uh, say in this video. But if you want to know more about uh, the differences between doing a PhD in the U.S. versus Denmark, you should uh, have a look at uh, one of my other videos. Uh, but uh, that's all for now, uh, and I'll uh, see you in the next one.